Hello, everybody, and welcome to Learn with the Seesaw Expert. As we're waiting for everybody to join us tonight, we would love for you to introduce yourself in the chat, share where you're from, your role, or your grade level. So to open up that chat, just click on the chat icon in the lower right-hand corner, um, and then go ahead and share um, where you're from and what your role is. Welcome, everybody. Today, we are excited to be sharing how you can use CSOC's digital citizenship curriculum to teach kids how to be safe, kind, and responsible online. Hi, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Illinois. Yes. Hi, I'm from Illinois. I'm in Illinois. Sydney. China. Hi, Kim. Spain, Philippines. Oh, Holy wow. God. Hello. Hi, Deborah from Massachusetts. Deanna, welcome. North Carolina. Lakeville, Minnesota. Whoop, whoop. All That's right, right Minnesota. <laughs> Minnesota representing. That's right. <laughs> Seoul, South Korea. Hi, Stephanie. Welcome. Vancouver. Welcome, welcome. Great. We have people from all over with us. We do have a lot to get in this 30-minute session, so we want to make sure that we're able to get everything in. So we're going to go ahead and jump right in and get started. We are going to begin with a few housekeeping items before we actually get to the good stuff. Um, if you have questions during this session that you would like Chris, our uh, Seesaw expert, to answer, just please click on the Q&A tab and ask them there. This just ensures that we don't miss any of the questions. If there are questions that go unanswered, we will reach out to you personally and answer those after the webinar. Any other comments, thoughts, ideas that you have can be put in the chat tab so that all of our participants tonight can view them. So just a reminder to open up those tabs, click on the chat icon in the lower right corner of your screen, um, and you will have the option to toggle between the chat, Q&A, and the handout tabs. The handout tab is key because it includes some um, key takeaways from today's session. Um, also, our session is being recorded, and a link to the recording uh, will be shared in a follow-up email in about 24 to 48 hours after the session is complete. And we will also be sharing um, the handout again as well. So you all introduced yourself in the chat. So now let's learn a little bit about our Seesaw team. My name is Mia. I am the Training and Professional Development Specialist here at Seesaw. So I deliver professional development like this, and I create training um, resources and the materials to support teachers and districts in implementing Seesaw in their classroom. I am based in Chicago, so I saw some Illinois folks in the chat. Hello, hello. So I'm so happy to be with you, and I am going to turn it over over to our Seesaw expert for you to meet. And this is Chris, he's going to introduce himself quickly. Awesome, thank you, Mia. I'm Chris Shiner, the Partnership Manager and the host of today's session, I guess. Uh, very excited to be talking to you today about digital citizenship. Um, I was a kindergarten teacher and then technology coach and a long time Seesaw user. So I'm very excited to be sharing some things that we're starting to do around digital citizenship and uh, get you to put those into your classroom as we leave here today. Thanks so much, Chris. We are so excited to have you sharing all your expertise with everyone today. Teaching students to be good digital citizens is really crucial in today's digital world. Uh, as devices have come into the classroom, the classroom space now ex extends into the digital world. We need to ensure that our students know how to really act responsibly and respectfully in this digital space in order to ensure that they are safe. So we have an easy solution for you, digital citizenship with Seesaw Lessons. Teach your students to be safe online right in a platform that you already know and trust. So today we are going to get to explore one of our collections, Being Goes on the Internet, from our Seesaw Lessons Library. And we will also be sharing two free lessons from this collection with you at the end of our session today. 
Okay, so before we jump into the collection, let's talk about what Seesaw Lessons are. Seesaw Lessons are a school or district subscription to high quality standards align learning experiences that are ready to assign right within Seesaw. Teachers access Seesaw Lessons directly in their Seesaw account, so it's really easy, in their activity library under the Seesaw Lessons tab. As a reminder, Seesaw Lessons are a subscription. Um, you do have access right now to five free collections. And also, as I mentioned previously, we will be sharing some exclusive digital uh, citizenship lessons with you for free. All right, so today Chris is going to explain the benefits and scope of our digital citizenship lessons and how our bean goes on the internet. Collection incorporates purposeful learning design, allows students to learn through real world choices and gives educators the flexibility to teach these lessons when and where they see fit. So Chris, go ahead and take it away. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mia. We're so excited to be sharing one of our newest collections with you. It's all about digital citizenship. Bean Goes on the Internet is a fun-filled collection that's packed with deep understanding of key computer science skills. I'll be showing you examples of how all three of these, purposeful learning, real-world choices, and flexible delivery, are embedded into this collection itself. Before we jump into looking exactly at the lessons itself, I want to give you a picture of what the whole scope is for this collection. So Bean Goes on the Internet is a K through 2 collection, and that's kind of unique in and of itself. We know that K through 2 students often don't get exposed to these computer literacy skills, but this is all purposefully designed to make sure that these students have the maximum capacity they can at that really young age too. This is all aligned with CSTA, ISTE, and ELA standards, and it's designed to teach even those smallest, youngest learners to these digital citizenship skills. There's 14 core lessons built into this entire uh, collection, spanning from internet safety, screen time, media literacy, digital footprint, and even cyberbullying. Each grade level has four or five available lessons for them to teach, but these are all designed for you to teach at any time and in any capacity. And you'll see some of those examples here in a little bit. All of them have embedded ELA standards, so they are designed to be taught by a classroom teacher or a media specialist or even a technology integrationist. So let's kind of take a peek at what very first component there, purposeful design, as we unpack Bean Goes on the Internet. This is the very first component, and we'll look at some practical examples here in just a second. This is a collection that is purposefully designed around student understanding. We all know that K through students sometimes get the wiggles pretty quick. We were careful to design our lessons in a way that helps these young learners to focus and be able to absorb this content in the best way possible. Each lesson is broken into purposeful learning blocks, and these allow you as the teacher to quickly pick up and implement these lessons. Those blocks are whole class instruction, independent or guided practice, student reflection, and partner or family connection. This collection also has some of our newest and most creative design techniques, including an in-app simulation, excuse me, that you'll see here in just a second. These simulations allow students to experience the internet and keep them inside of Seesaw in a very safe and hands-on way. Let's take a peek at the first learning chunk here. This is an example of the introduction. This is a whole class introduction that is a purposeful time for students to build on prior knowledge, create a shared understanding of the key vocabulary that's going to be taught. This is a foundation. This is a, is a foundational component that allows students to launch into the lesson with success, no matter what they come into the lesson with. The second component is the practice. Now, again, this is guided or independent practice. It's a key and deep understanding of the learning outcomes. This can be completely independent or it can be somewhat guided depending on the grade level that you have. Regardless of how it's delivered, students love learning alongside Bean in this super fun and engaging learning style. You can see here, this is just a quick preview that we'll dive into a little bit of exactly what all those components are within the practice itself. After practice is student reflection. This is an opportunity for students to show what they have learned. This showcase allows you as the teacher to check in with the class and make an educational decision. Do we need to explore more about the content or do you think we got it and we're ready to move on? 
It's a great page for you to know exactly where everybody's at. Take the temperature of the class and be able to do something with that in the classroom so that you can move your students along together. The final component is the partner or family connection activity. This is a core component of any Seesaw lesson, not just being goes on the internet. This connection allows students to learn from each other and bring their learning home, creating a strong home to school connection. That is one plus that we have at Seesaw and we emphasize that even more with lessons and activities just like this one, the home to school connection. One of the more unique aspects of this collection is that in-app simulation, excuse me, that uh, we tried to replicate with our design principles. These are pages that look like this that are very purposefully designed to look and feel like you're on the inter internet actually playing a game when in reality, you're still safe on Seesaw. Simulations like these allow students to explore the internet without you as the teacher worrying about where they might go, what they might click on, what they might accidentally do. The two games that you can see here embedded in this lesson are Find the Cat, which is a super fun flashlight hidden game where students click a little audio clip, they listen to the sleuthing music, and then they have to discover all the hidden cats that are hiding in the darkness. The second game that you saw there was Clean My Teeth, where students get to clean the teeth of one of the other characters, Tooth Monster. Students just use the eraser tool just like this to clear off all the teeth and gunk and germs that you're going to see on there in a fun, interactive way that, again, replicates being on the internet without having students leave our platform or go somewhere that could not be super safe for them. So why would we design our digital citizenship curriculum this way? Well, the answer is easy for us. Concepts are reinforced, which helps students recall information quicker and for longer periods of time. Learning digital skills can be difficult for young learners. Making it super tangible like we have allows it to be a lot easier to understand for those little learners. And it's always way more fun and engaging to learn in these super interactive ways. The second part that we're gonna dive into here is about real world choices. This is a key in unlocking students' understanding and connecting this to the real world, even if we're using examples that come in from the outside. It's being exposed to those real world choices that students get to experience in super practical and tangible ways that you'll see here come to life. This is gonna to lead to much better decision-making as students move on from being goes on the internet and actually start to explore the internet independently. Here's one quick example of what this looks like in Bean Goes on the Internet. Every lesson in this collection has a choice page, just like this one. It's a page where students have to apply their knowledge and make a real world choice. Some of these choices are gonna be really super hard for kids, like this one. Bean just got done playing a super really fun game, but there's a new game there and it also looks super really fun. <laughs> so what is Bean gonna do? Students get to relate with Bean and really get to feel that empathy about that torn of, I really want to play that new game. This was really super fun, but what do I actually need to do? These kind of situations allow students to connect their experiences with the internet, and it's a gentle way to coach good decision making in students so they're better prepared for when they actually do go on the internet and they get faced with potentially harder choices as they go. After students make a choice, they're presented with video feedback. This is a quick and instantaneous way for them to continue their learning cycle. It's a personal conversation with Bean about the choice that you just made, whether it was choosing to ask a grown-up or to simply play the game. These videos have been very carefully sculpted to model a growth mindset from Bean. No matter the choice, students have the ability to go back and try again. Let's go on to the next page and actually hear what Bean is saying so you can resonate with this. Oops, I didn't ask my grown up first. That wasn't a safe choice. It's exciting to play a new game, but some games aren't safe. So let's try again and this time remember, if you don't know, ask to go. Awesome. So you heard there at the very end, there was a fun little slogan that goes with every single lesson. We built that in so that it's something that students can chant and repeat and, and absorb as they start to go through their entire lesson. And it's a fun thing that allows them to resonate with the learning outcome that's coming there. If it's not safe, let's make sure we ask. Oops, Oops. I didn't Sorry. ask my grown up first. That wasn't- Go into the next page. There we go. 
<laughs> All right. So why do why would we design our digital lessons to have real world choices in there? Applying learning deepens the student understanding. Examples in the real world are super relatable to students' daily lives. Relevant applications help students to carry their skills into the real world. All of these components are why we would have students complete these real world choices and have that empathy struggle as they start to learn alongside being all about good choices around the internet. The third component of this collection is about flexible delivery. We know that there are a lot of models of how digital citizenship curriculum is taught out there. Sometimes it's done by a media specialist, sometimes it's done by a classroom teacher, but rest assured, we designed this content to be flexible enough to be impactful in any setting. We made sure that the delivery, the scope, the sequence, and everything that came with it can be done by any classroom in any setting, in any school district, in any place around the world. The learning chunks are broken down in a way that can fit into any classroom. The whole class introduction sets the stage for students. The practice is designed to be assigned for individual practice, whole class guided practice, or any other kind of practice that you'd like to complete. The student reflection and connection allows the students to share their knowledge in super unique ways. Each of these components are also individually assignable. This allows you as the teacher the maximum flexibility for your classroom or in your school district setting. The scope and sequence for this lesson is defined, but it's not a limiting factor. We want to make sure that that's really understand. The lessons taught don't, they do build from grade to grade, but they can be taught as standalone lessons as well. The knowledge learned in a first grade lesson doesn't hinge on the students remembering that information in kindergarten. It allows for the reteaching of lessons. We all know sometimes students forget something or it slips their mind, but you don't need to worry. Simply bring that lesson back through again. The flexible and excuse me, the flexibility in delivery allows you to complete a whole class refresher or you can assign the lesson again for independent practice. This allows you as the teacher to use these lessons when it fits your classroom best. Maybe you want to talk about screen time right before winter break when you know your students are going to go home and potentially have a little bit more screen time. Or maybe you're going to address how you give credit to sources early in the year, right before a research paper, and then do it again later on when you circle back on a different research paper. It's all okay. We design these lessons to be taught anytime and by anyone. So why would we design this for flexible delivery? Well, we wanted to make sure that we always do our best for you guys as teachers. Meeting the needs of any classroom, any time is always our number one priority with lessons. It can be taught when it fits best into your classroom or into your school. It can be taught repeatedly for a refresher or to prep for a whole new unit. Hi. Thanks, Chris, so much for sharing all that knowledge and expertise on digital citizenship. Bingos on the internet is actually one of five collections that we offer here at Seesaw that support teachers uh, with integrating computer science into their classroom. The other collections include STEAM, Visual Data Talk, Mission Code, and Computational Thinking. These Seesaw lessons allow everyday teachers to teach computer science with confidence and a sense of joy without having to be an expert. All five of our collections engage with real world computer science concepts through hands on and digital activities. Seesaw lessons provide the perfect first exposure to computer science to scaffold skills into other platforms. Everything that teachers need for rigorous engaging lessons is built right into each collection. Printable lesson plans empower teachers to provide step-by-step -step guidance and model computer science skills for their students. So in the handout tab, you will find a link to a handout that contains two free lessons from our Being Goes On the Internet collection. However, we have a bonus for you today. Um, in addition to those two free CFAL lessons um, for Being Goes On the, the Internet, we also are including links to two free lessons from each of the other computer science collections as well. So all you have to do is tap the link and save the lesson to your my library. 
And also, if you do need more basics on how um, to use Seesaw, make sure you check out our training page and we will drop that link to the training page for you in the chat. All right, so now we do have a few minutes for questions. So if you do have questions, make sure that you drop those in that Q&A tab and we will go ahead and answer those for you. Hmm. All right, Chris, are the direct instruction portion and activity portion and reflection portion all part of the same activity? Absolutely, that's a fantastic question. And it's one that we're really designing all of our lessons around to make sure that they can flow in the same way. So yes, they're all part of the same activity, but they're individually assignable, which allows you as the teacher the flexibility to assign one part and then complete it, assign another part, complete it. Maybe you realize you need to go back and do that part again. Uh, you have all the flexibility to complete that same lesson in whatever way it fits best into your classroom. So the answer is yes, they're all part of one lesson, but they're all individual components that can be assigned on their own. Great. Anything for pre-K. I love it. I love it. Um, there is a collection uh, that is not out, that is not part of digital citizenship uh, that is for pre-K TK specifically. Uh, that one has a lot of different components from our math and ELA and science and other things like that. Um, but I will say connecting it with this specifically is that these lessons can still be applied in a pre-K environment. Uh, they can be taught through a guided lens as you, the teacher, can potentially coach some things into students, um, especially the lesson that you saw there around making smart internet choices and being safe on the internet. That is for sure applicable for pre-K students. We all know they're flipping through the pages on apps or the pages on websites and just clicking on whatever looks fun and exciting. So this can certainly apply in a pre-K classroom as well. Definitely. Does it cover how to care for their device? Yeah, gr another great question here. Um, I'll say this collection talks a little bit about what devices are, but there are other collections that talk specifically around, you know, how do we charge our device? How do we troubleshoot some things? How do we make sure that we're putting it away safely? Um, but that would be a different collection called Code the World, which is going to be coming out in August. So that's just a little little primer for everybody to kind of peek at, uh, but this one specifically doesn't address it, but we're for sure thinking about that and making sure that that's something that we build into Seesaw Lessons. Great, so exciting. You purchased the lesson separately. Do you purchase, yes. Yep. So this uh, Seesaw Lessons is a subscription that's out there. Um, it's one that once you, you purchase it, it's kind of like Netflix, where you have everything that is underneath the Seesaw Lessons umbrella. Uh, that is up to 18 collections right now, and it's continuing to grow. We add to it every semester. We add either a whole new collection or we add additions to existing collections. Uh, things are continuing to grow at a pretty rapid rate. So uh, yes, you can. It, it, there's a there's a cost for the subscription, but once you have that, you have access to everything that's inside of there. Yes, you will continue to get that premium content. Great. Absolutely. All right. How long these collections be free. Yeah, that's a good question. I'll take that one too, Mia. <laughs> Great, thank <laughs> well, you. I'll say there are there are uh, collections that are uh, offered for free for the rest of the school year. We're encouraging teachers to save those lessons so that they can have them, even if we decide to pull them off the teacher preview section. So they are available for the end of the school year. And then as we think about what next school year is going to look like, there's potentially going to be different free collections that are available for teachers to explore lessons, to kind of see what's available. Um, but just know that before the end of the year, we're asking all teachers to make sure you go in save the lessons that you want to keep and they'll be yours forever. We're never gonna take those away. Great, thank you. Good question, who's uh, creating these lessons? Who's creating? So um, <laughs> there is a, a team here at Seesaw called the Curriculum Team and they're filled with just wonderful, mindful experts who are almost all exclusively former teachers uh, and former Seesaw users. 
We also do a lot of consulting with experts like Adria Klein, who's a well-known early literacy expert. She comes in and helps us. She advises us um, and she, she works with us to continue to build content that has the rigor that we need to. So um, although it's being made by teachers in-house, we have a very powerful bank of experts who come and make sure that the rigor we're aiming for is something we hit. Um, on top of that, part of the design process is to make sure that we're testing this in classrooms, we're talking to teachers all the time, uh, and we're making sure that what we're designing is really going to hit that mark. And so um, it, there's, a, there's a large uh, process that kind of comes with it to make sure that we're putting out there is the best that it possibly can be. Great. How many of these lessons can you access with the free version and what can only ac be yeah. accessed via the subscription? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, so I'll say the, the free version, I think it's referring to the free version of Seesaw. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of speak to that a little bit. Uh, you can use all these lessons in the free version of Seesaw. The only catch 22 is you can't modify a page that comes with it, but you can take them, you can assign them, you can complete them. Um, if you did have a subscription to either Seesaw for Schools, uh, you can edit some things, you can change some things, you can add more pages if you want to. And if you had a subscription to Seesaw Lessons, then you have access to the entire library. So you can choose whatever you want uh, and assign and use those in your classroom, how it fits you best. And just to add on to that, um, the, the free offerings, the teacher preview that we have, there are five collections that are currently available for free until the end of the school year. As Chris mentioned, um, for next school year, there will be um, some potentially different uh, collections lesson um, available for free. But within those five collections, there are over 100 lessons that teachers have access to right now. Oh, good, good. Um, what standards? What standards? Develop these lessons. Fantastic. So I'll speak specifically to computer science first. Um, all of our computer science collections, which this is one of them, is aligned to CSTA and ISTE standards. And anything that we have that has um, that fits into a mold like this is just technology, we also try to weave in ELA or math standards as well. So this collection specifically is CSTA, ISTE, and ELA standards. Um, I'll say as we think of lessons as a whole and as a bigger picture, um, we try to cover all collections uh, in all standards as it goes. So NGSS, Common Core Standards for ELA and Math, um, we're addressing social emotional standards and CASEL and a lot of different things like that. So uh, we're, we're creating a very broad offering as we're starting to put these lesson collections out there. Great. Thanks, Chris. All right, lots of great questions coming yeah, in. <laughs> are any of the lessons in other languages that are not in English for non-native speakers? Yes, that's a fantastic question. And it's for sure on the forefront of our mind on the curriculum team. Uh, so there are two collections right now, I believe, that are fully in English and fully in Spanish. Uh, and what we're doing is we're working to continue to have more collections that fit that mold. Um, if you remember back to what you saw, there is an English and a Spanish translation button in the top left corner of every lesson. Those simply just read the audio directions or the text on the screen in that specific language. But uh, what we're doing is working to have everything in the lesson to be in English and to be in Spanish. And those are just separate versions that are out there. So right now there's two collections um, and we're continuing to grow that as we start to think about back to school. Great. Maybe one more question and then we're going to wrap up. Oh, this is a good one. Do you have anything for blended classroom personalized learning? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I will selfishly say that all of these can fit that model <laughs> because I think, you know, the tools that Seesaw offers, the flexibility that comes with lessons specifically, um, anything can fit into, into the blended classroom or into personalizing students' learning. Uh, the ability to assign things to individual students and to be able to meet their needs and see their uh, learning grow as they complete these lessons uh, would probably be something that fits into all of these models. So that'll be my selfish answer on that one. Yes. And as you jump into and explore the other collections, you'll notice that um, a lot of the activities are not only digital, but they are hands on. And as Chris said, they marry those multimodal tools that um, students have access to within CFA. Great. 
So once again, we do want to thank you all for joining us tonight. And thank you so much, Chris, for um, walking us through the scope and all the benefits of this digital citizenship collection and sharing your expertise. Uh, we would love to get your feedback, everyone who attended um, on this session. So we are going to drop a link to a Google form in the chat. Please make sure that you can complete that so that we can um, cater us uh, future sessions specifically based on your needs and your desires. So we hope that you learned how to uh, flexibly use Seesaw Lessons to teach your students how to be safe, kind, and responsible when using technology. So um, your goal is to try some of the digital citizenship lessons that we shared with you today from that handout with your students. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you again, Chris, for being here and sharing all of your knowledge. And we really hope to see you again soon here at Seesaw. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.